let's debunk four myths about Cuenca, Ecuador. Before I get started, I better do a disclaimer because I get so much hate mail when I say anything that comes across as critical. And this is going to be critical. However, this video is for the express purpose of debunking myths, stories that abound on the internet and that are supported and reinforced by people on social media. And if they were true, that would be fine. But by the very nature, being the myths, they're not true. And so I'm here to debunk them. Doesn't mean I don't like Cuenca. And no matter where I lived, I would be debunking myths of wherever those places are because no place is perfect. Cuenca is very nice. I live here quite happily. But there are some myths. As you watch this, try not to get too worked up. Okay, myth number one. Cuenca is full of friendly people. Everybody in Ecuador is oh so friendly, oh so welcoming. Now that's not to say that some aren't, but I want to explain something about this. Ever been down south in the USA? Bless their heart. That's what they say before they say something scathing. People down south have this social ability to say horrible things in the nicest of ways. It's a social construct. It's part of being a southerner. It's part of the charm. Well, in Cuenca, you have a social construct. And that construct goes back for a long, long time ago. And I've talked about how people in Cuenca are very formal. Titles matter. So what do I mean about debunking the myth of friendly people? Well, as you're here and you integrate yourself into the society and as you see and observe more things, I'm going to name some things that if you've been here, you're going to, oh yeah, oh yeah. That doesn't exactly go along with the title of friendly people. One, cutting in line. The worst I've experienced was in Corral Central at Mall Del Rio before a holiday. I think it was before Christmas, a week or so before. But people were pushing and shoving and sneaking into line and just being barbaric. I mean, I've been to stores in the USA on Black Friday and I've seen some crazy things. But as a matter of course here, cutting lines is a blood sport and they're not so friendly when they're doing that and it isn't just on the holidays you'll see this in various situations here's the thing behind people being friendly in Cuenca I mentioned it's cultural most people are aware that there's this you have to say buenos dias buenos dias buenos tardes and you begin a conversation with some niceties. How's the family? How are you feeling? How's everything going? It's just this overall politeness that's cultural. It doesn't mean that they're really interested in that. It doesn't mean it's what they have to do. The pressure of the society requires that they be like that. Being nice to someone is a requirement. I saw a situation where somebody came up to a friend of mine and this person had actually stolen from them about a year before and not in a minor way. But when this person came up, a friend of mine, hello, how are you? How are you doing? All the niceties. Now I'd spit in their eye. I'd punch them in the eye. You know, you might do something you certainly wouldn't be so nice to them. But being a cultural requirement, it's ingrained in their system. 
Were they being a friendly person to them? They were being culturally appropriate. So many people that you meet that you view as being oh so friendly are just being culturally acceptable. And when you turn your back or go out the door, it doesn't, it doesn't mean it's what's in their heart. It doesn't mean it's not. I have some good friends. I believe in them. I trust them. In some cases, I rely on them, but I don't make friends easily or lightly, and they deserve that trust that I place in them. I've met other people that were just fake. They were culturally acceptable, but it wasn't real, and I've got a smell detector for that. I've seen so many situations where, for example, in Tienda, a person is being oh so nice to some gringos that are standing there, when they turn their back and walk away, the person might roll their eyes or say something quietly to, you know, their family member standing there. So just keep in mind, it's not that they're not friendly. It's that being friendly is culturally required. And so you don't really know if they're really being friendly or if they're just doing what they have to do. It takes time to work that out. It takes time to develop a kind of relationship where you know the difference. Ringo pricing. Now a lot of people talk about it and there's a couple of video bloggers that are always talking about Ringo pricing and how you're going to get screwed and don't let yourself get screwed and you know you're a target they're going to prey on you and there's a few cases a few situations where that might be true but I'm here to debunk that myth. In most cases, that's absolutely not true. If you go into Supermaxi, the price is the price. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't care. When you walk up to that cash register, it's gonna go through and when you give them your Supermaxi card, it's gonna apply the same discounts to whoever is standing there. When I go into Corral Central, it's the same way. If I go to look at a washer and a dryer, I'm able to negotiate just like anybody else. And the new dryer I bought, I got one heck of a price. It wasn't gringo priced. It's a business trying to get as much as they can out of it while still making the sale. Where you will run into this is in the Mercados, a few tiendas, most no, but a few and in some taxis. It's simply because they see a possibility of picking up a few extra bucks and they're going to try to take it. And if you let them, then you let them. They got you. And there's a lack of respect for you if you do fall for that. Now you also have a situation where you might go into a tienda. Let's say you went to, let's say you go to a hat store. And you want to buy the hat and they put a price on it of forty dollars you say okay here's forty dollars well you could say you got gringo priced except they do that to anybody that came in you could be from argentina if you're not aware of those prices they're going to get what they can out of it no you can be a gringo or an ecuadorian or from argentina it doesn't matter you can reply back to them i'll give you 20 bucks Oh, no, 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 the 35. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll come up to 25. No, 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 35, that's it. Oh, okay, we'll see you later. It's, wait, 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 senor, senor. Okay, 30, 25, 25. And when time comes, you pay $25 for a $25 hat. Yeah, that exists all over the world. That's not being gringo, that's just negotiating a business price. So, a myth that everything is gringo priced and everybody's out to get you just isn't true. You're going to run into it occasionally. And in particular, in the Mercados and taxis, you know, you got some drivers that are heartless, but most are very on the up and up. So, I wouldn't worry so much about this gringoed idea. 
Now we're on the topic of finances and money. I do want to point something out. Flashing money is vulgar here. You notice when you go into a restaurant, you can sit there for three days before, they're not going to bring you the bill. You have to ask for it. There's something low class, there's something vulgar, there's something insulting about actually dealing with money. That's why when you see a post trying to sell something, you know, I've got, uh, I've got a flat screen TV and they give all the information about it, but there's no price. And that's a typical and frustrating thing here. It's because talking about pricing is beneath them. It's insulting. It's vulgar. And here we come. It's like, what's the first thing out of our mouth? How much is that? Well, they, they accept it because they've seen enough people do that. They see our movies, so they understand that the rest of the world might be like that, but they're not like that. And that goes back to years ago with the caste system. It, it's still part of that. So keep that in mind when it comes to tipping. Well, many places will now accept or even expect tips simply because it's a common practice with people coming from North America. Even Ecuadorians that have lived there and they come here and they get into that habit of doing it. But there was a time, and it still exists now with some people, where giving that tip is condescending and insulting. What do you mean? I'm gainfully employed. What are you trying to say? Are you saying that I'm poor and I need it? So, you know, just keep that in mind because you will run into that. In Colombia, we run into that a lot. In, in Cuenca itself, you don't run into that too much. In Hidon, the little town south of here, that's more old-timey and it's certainly like that the price is what the price is and if you're giving more it's like what's going on here what you could I think you can imagine how that could be insulting okay let's debunk another cost of living one of our favorite topics right here's the thing about the cost of living whether I've said it in the past, other people say it, people that live here, friends that you know, whether you see it on other YouTube videos, it's all really a matter of perspective. It's a matter of your situation in life and your expectation. Now, I have claimed many times that if you're a single person and you go below $1,200, you're gonna live kind of a sad, miserable existence in Cuenca and that you need somewhere between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars now that's what I said based on my opinion can you live for a thousand dollars yeah you can you won't be doing much but you can but everything is a matter of perspective does that mean the cost of living is high or low now when I talk about cost of living I'm always phrasing it in the situation of people that are coming here that are no longer in the workforce. And most people, it seems, that come here that are in the retirement situation or they've saved money and they're doing some online income, which is where I am. They have limited incomes and it's not huge. So if you're, if you're gainfully employed, you, let's say you're in the United States and you come here to do a fact-finding mission about the cost of living. And back home, you're knocking down $4,000 a month, we'll say. Not a tremendous amount, but pretty good. And you come here. From the perspective of $4,000 a month, as you're looking around, you go, oh my God, I can really make it. And you could. You could do really, really well, $4,000 a month here. But people, for the most part, aren't coming here with $4,000 a month. And so when I talk about cost of living, I'm talking about the situation of 
the vast majority of people that are coming here that are on a limited income that's below a couple thousand dollars. And I'm speaking very often to the people that are 800 to thousand dollar range where there are better places to live if your only consideration is cost of living. Cuenca would not be the place for that. So that's what I'm referring to. But the idea of the cost of living in Cuenca being, you know, I can live on $300 or I can live on $500 or I can live on $800. A lot of that has to do with what you consider living. If you live in a horrible neighborhood and you want to live in a hovel, you could get a place for a couple hundred dollars a month. Now, I'll do another video on this, but recently a person I talked to went back to the United States. He did a video on cost of living and he said that the utilities barely exist. We didn't really didn't get into much conversation on that, but that's actually not the case. My utilities come to about $150 a month. So you have utility costs. They may not be high, but they exist. When you're on that limited income, it makes a difference. So if you live in a decent area with a decent apartment, you're going to pay minimum $300, $350 to a maximum. Well, there's no limit on the maximum, but it will say five or six hundred dollars it, it can go up to two thousand or more but let's say that range three three fifty five six hundred dollars you add to that the utilities you add to that food and your food costs are going to run somewhere between probably two and four hundred dollars depending on how you choose to eat then it doesn't leave you a whole lot on that limited income for other things and to live you want to go out once in a while hit up a nice restaurant which can be very pricey uh, some of the restaurants here for two people you're gonna spend over a hundred bucks on the ticket so the idea of the cost of living in Cuenca being cheap when it's one of the more expensive places in Ecuador It's simply not really valid and you have to look at it from your point of view, your perspective of what you will actually have when you're here. You also need to take into account situations that might come up. For example, I make part of my money on internet income. Recently, due to a few things, I lost a tremendous amount of that, so I'm making considerably less than I did in the past. So whereas before I had money to waste, now I have to really watch myself or I run out of money. So consider things that could happen and could occur. Again, if your bottom line is cost of living, if that's the only reason to look at Cuenca, Ecuador, then move along. There are other better options for you. Cuenca, Ecuador can be a wonderful place it can be very affordable, but it's deceiving. And the last thing on my little myth busters is the weather. We see all the time, Cuenca is spring-like weather. It's beautiful all the time. The weather's perfect. It's not. It's spring-like weather if you live in Ontario, Canada. It's not bad. But it gets cold. It'll get down 30, 40 degrees at night. There's many people that are here that go out and buy heaters. Now the houses don't come with furnaces. It's absolutely true. But it gets cold. And you're going to throw on extra blankets. People that live here are always walking around with layers and coats and sweaters. And if you go to their house and you stay overnight, there's 15 blankets that you can pile on one at a time until you get to the right warmth. Just because they don't have heaters doesn't mean it doesn't get cold. So if you think that you're going to come here and walk around in shorts and t-shirts all the time, then no, it's going to be cool. It runs 60s, 
70s or colder, not much warmer. Uh, is, also, in the spring-like weather, what do you associate with spring? Rain. It rains half the year here. I got into kind of an argument with somebody on Facebook when they were just totally ignoring the facts and they just wanted to say it's always sunny here. And you will find in countless sources the amount of rainfall and when you compare that to places in the United States you find out what is considered to be the most rainy place in the United States. Seattle, right? Everybody talks about that. Here in Cuenca, we get more rain than they get in Seattle for the year. That's a fair amount of rain, and that's rain half the time. Now, there's good things with that, but it is not bright and sunny all day. right now. It's uh, amazingly overcast and a little cool out, and we're in July, and it's been raining. Well, it began in March, it rained almost every day until last month, and now it's raining every other day. When they say spring-like weather, spring-like for where? It's more like Ontario, Canada. So that's my Mythbusters, four items. Don't hate me too much. I'll see you next time.